What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Tansy Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Hey guys, welcome into another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host Glenn Martin, and we're excited to introduce a new friend of the show, Cooper Klaus, uh, from Shake Down the Numbers podcast and uh, One Foot Down as a contributor as well. We we are excited, uh, Cooper. Thanks for coming on the show. We're really excited to get your take on one of the Ravens draft picks in the fifth round, Dalen Hayes. So uh, thanks again for your time. Yep, thanks for having me. Always excited to talk about Notre Dame football and former Notre Dame football players. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and the first thing I want to start is I want to talk about him as a person because the Ravens, you know, always value character um, very highly on their board. Uh, so I know he was a captain at Notre Dame, but what more can you tell us about Dalen as a teammate and uh, you know a leader in his um, in the community? Yeah, if the, if the draft was based solely on character and culture, he probably is the first overall pick. Nice. This guy, he, wow. he, yeah, he won the Freddie Solomon Community Spirit Award this past year. Um, it recognizes a college football player who's impacted the lives of others in the community. Um, I can talk about his community service too. He taught it. It's just a lengthy list. He taught a twice <laughs> weekly class at the Robinson community center in South Bend, working with fourth and fifth graders on how to resolve conflicts, volunteered at the food bank in Northern Indiana, South Bend center for the homeless boys and girls club, volunteered to read weekly at uh Suter Baker elementary school for first graders. And then was also a mentor for, um, juvenile youth, juvenile, um, kids at the South Bend Juvenile Detention Center. So just in like with his football commitments on top of that, the amount of time he spent in the community um, volunteering, especially um, not from South Bend, from the Michigan area, just getting very involved, cares a lot about the community he's in and wants to make an impact, was a big leader in the social justice, um, justice campaigns Notre Dame put on in the summer. So he's a, uh, if, if he makes it in the NFL, if he has a productive career, he's in no doubt in my mind is going to be a future captain for a football team. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're glad to hear that because, uh, yeah, the Ravens have mentioned, and I mentioned it before, they spend more time now analyzing a guy's character than than strictly their on-the-field stuff. So sounds like he checked all the boxes that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no doubt. And he'll, he'll certainly quickly become a community favorite here if, if he continues those efforts uh, here in Baltimore. Uh, I think that they're one of the most you know connected teams in the league. I'm biased. But, uh, you know, they do a really good job at trying to be amongst the community. So that's that's exciting. Now, as far as on the field stuff goes, you know, Dalen was certainly not like a stat stuffer uh, last year. But um, sometimes that can be due to scheme or other things. Uh, do you think that his, you know, lack of production in sacks and tackles was a scheme thing? Or or what do you think that that uh, what it was that really hindered his, you know, counting numbers production? Yeah, I will say Notre Dame is has been very deep on the defensive line the last few years and is con and continues to be so they recruit really well at the position and like to rotate heavily at the position i don't know how it will be under the new defensive coordinator but under clark lee that was the case so he might not produce the same number of counting stats on the team but he was a very productive player in terms of pff grade he was the second highest player on the team last year second to jeremiah osu koromoa um, at 79.3 which was it was 21st among draft eligible players. So solid ranking. Again, he's not going to be in my mind, a star player. If you're looking for someone who's going to produce 20 sacks a year, lead the league in pressures, that's not what you're looking or that's not what you're going to find, but someone who is probably a very capable third down rusher. If you kick in your edge rushers on first and second down inside, he can be a very good pass rusher and also capable in coverage. He had an interception this past year. Um, not like a stellar coverage guy, but able to drop back in certain looks and um, disguise coverages. Um, so yeah, not a insanely productive player in terms of counting numbers, but if you want a solid contributor in a specific role, he's a perfect fit. Nice. Yeah, certainly looks like he has the the ideal build uh, coming to Baltimore. And and I was curious about that build because he also looks like he might be able to put on some more weight on his frame. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what do you think his eventual playing weight will be and size and all? Yep. So he's, he was hampered by injuries, um, early in his career. And also his 2019 season was cut short due to a shoulder injury. And I think he'll need to put on some weight just because he's not the most explosive athlete. He's not a bad athlete tested in kind of like the 50th, 60th percentile. But if you're a smaller player and he weighed in at six, three, 253 pounds, you have to be, I think very, you have to compensate with a lot of athleticism. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think he'll need to add in, on some size, not necessarily just bulk. I think mean, just muscle to 
kind of withstand some of the higher power guards tackles in the NFL. Um, Cause I don't think he's going to win with speed. So he's going to need to probably add some weight um, if he's going to have a successful career. Yeah, that's a great point. One of the things I, I am always curious to ask people about, especially with late round, later round guys um, is about their, their now contribution. The Ravens have this like window, you know, but once Lamar Jackson gets paid, this roster has potential to look very different. Uh, so right now we, we feel like we're in win now mode. And so when we draft guys, you know, you want to draft for potential, but you also want to draft for, uh, now production, right? Are there any, is there a certain skill set or anything he does right now that you think, you know, starting, you know, day one in the NFL, he would, without improving, he would be able to, you know, contribute to a team. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He graded out higher as a run defender, um, in college than he did as a pass rusher. And it was pretty close, but I think, he'll give you a high level of floor. He's not necessarily, he doesn't necessarily excel in one area of the game in terms of he's a great pass rusher, but doesn't really defend the run like Yannick Ngakwe um, mm-hmm. or we other know guys. All about that. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, I think he's, he'll, he's someone who's solid is not necessarily a star in any facet of the game, but is an all around just good player. So it's, yeah, it's tough to say that there might be something he can contribute at early um, while developing another area of his game. Yeah, and you touched on a little bit earlier um, about him dropping in coverage, and I, and it was nice to hear because I don't think there's another team that asks its outside linebackers to drop into coverage more than the Ravens. Uh, so you said he had a pick. Was he was he asked to do that often? Was that just a, a here and there thing, or is that something he's really comfortable with? Yeah, it's not often. Um, Notre Dame would if when they were facing pass heavy teams playing a lot of three or four receiver sets, they would switch to. Uh, a four man look on the defensive line, but have one of the edges drop into coverage. So um, it's not something the defensive linemen are asked to do often, but he gave up four catches on eight targets for 22 yards and an interception. So wasn't really tested much and didn't, I think he had maybe 20 snaps in coverage. Um, but when he, when he was in it, he did pretty well. So it's, it's not necessarily a strength, but it's, he's something he's been comfortable with and hasn't really been exploited, which is, I think all you can really ask for, um, in a guy who hasn't really played much and is coming into a scheme where he's going to be looked to do that. Yeah, no, definitely. I totally agree there. Uh, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I'd be curious to know, um, do you have a, in mind, a player that he's comparable to, you know, that he's comparable to in the NFL that you say, okay, I can see a lot of similarities there between him and, and a current pro. Yep. So I'm a Vikings fan and, um, P- I, uh, follow PFF a lot. I think they have a lot of good data and mm-hmm. they comped him to a Fetty I think, I don't know if he's still with the Vikings, but he was a, he was a, maybe a former defensive end with them. Um, who was a good third down pass rusher. Didn't really, wasn't able to establish himself on early downs. I think that's kind of where you'd his, not a ceiling, but kind of his, you'd hope to, he could be someone who could do that. And maybe he can give you more, but someone who is as a smaller guy and not the most athletic, allows you to kick in your more athletic guys in inside um, on third downs on obvious passing downs and give you some push on the outside as well as being able to drop back in coverage and give you that versatility. So I think someone like that in terms of size and production is someone who's comparable. I don't know what Odin Igbo's coverage skills necessarily, but um, I think that's kind of a, a good idea of what you can expect. And he was a, he was a seventh round pick too. So it's solid contributor for a few years. Right. Yeah, and it sounds like a lot of – we had like we're with Pernell McPhee um, and some other guys where they, they weren't fast enough to get it done on the edges, but they had heavy hands and they were able to provide that that pass rush from the interior. So it sounds like this guy kind of falls in line with that. Yep, I would say so. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's nice yeah. to hear. At least you can get it, there some way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and that it sounds to me and what's encouraging is that uh, – and Glenn, let me know what your thoughts are. It sounds like we've had a lot of – you're talking about per- Pernell McPhee, but we've had a lot of guys similar to that come here and have success, go on to get big contracts or be you know uh, ready contributors uh, within that rotation defensive line. And the other thing that you mentioned, Cooper, as well, is that – the rotation that that Notre Dame plays with is is probably something. I mean, that we do that. We are pretty deep on the D line, and and Mart and Martindale will, you know, rotate guys in and out pretty regularly, mm-hmm. and so he'll be ready to contribute that way as well. Um, man, I'm I'm excited to get this kid. Uh, what did you have him graded as? You know, what round did you grade him at in the draft? Uh, were you surprised when he went in the fifth round? Um, no, that was probably around where I thought he would go, fifth to sixth round. I could see teams valuing his character a lot and pushing him up boards. Um, but that was probably around where I, I think he would go. So not a reach by any means. I think it was pretty, pretty good value for where he went. Nice. And, one, and one thing Ravens fans need to see is that he, that he plays hard. So 
on the field, is he a high effort guy or a guy that takes plays off? High effort guy. I he had some trouble with some of the better teams we face. His worst uh, graded game last year was against Alabama in the college football playoff, but that not necessarily because he didn't try. I think he you'll see a lot of a consistent worker, a hard worker. Um, not going to wow you as in terms of athleticism, but I think that um, kind of forces you to work even harder as to compensate for that. So he's high work ethic, high character, um, all you can ask for in terms of makeup in a football player. Man, that's awesome because I remember back in the day when we took Haloti Nada, all the talent that he had coming out and people, Ravens fans were still upset because he took plays off in college and that narrative was a big deal here. Obviously, you know, people ended up loving Haloti Nada and he had a really successful he- career here. But uh, having a guy like that that gets all the potential out of himself is going to be a fan favorite, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so we're excited, man. We we appreciate the time tonight. We can't We can't wait to see him out on the field. Um, and hopefully we get to have you back on when he's uh, when he's ripping it up, right? Yeah, we'd love to be back. Yeah, hopefully, oh. ho- hopefully it works out for him. Hopefully it works out for you guys too. Awesome, man. No, appreciate it. Why don't you let our, our fans and listeners uh, know where they can find the stuff you're working on and things like that? Yep, definitely. So um, my partner Jack and Cannon and I we are we run a Twitter account at nd underscore fb underscore analytics. Um, you can find us there. We post some threads with some content and. We're also contributors at One Foot Down. It's Notre Dame's SB Nation site, onefootdown.com. And we're uh, advanced analytics stats podcast. So if you want a kind of new look in terms of college football data, Notre Dame football data, um, give us a follow. Check us out. Nice. nice. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Have a good yep. evening. Yep. Thanks, Thanks Stuart.